Okay, I'm gonna break away from the chamber itself for just a second. <laughs> Probably what I'm fixing to show you is going to throw a loop, and I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to give you a little piece of something right now that I'll get into more later. <clears throat> but the items that you're looking at right here is what it takes me to seriously modify a combustion chamber in a head. And we're talking about exactness. And this ain't all of it, but this is, I'd say, the vast majority. There's some inks, some markers, and some other tricks that I use. We'll go over it. And the, what I'm getting at is, when you're doing a combustion chamber, it ain't just unshrouding the sides. Sometimes, like this Ford FE head was one of the best examples I could have had where the valve is excessively shrunk down in the combustion chamber and you got this big, tall, gigantic ridge. And a lot of people would just say, well, just break the ridge and roll it in there. It's not that simple. You can half-ass it if you want to do it like that. But to get the correct kick-out angle, once it leaves the 30 and then the 15 degree uh exit of the valve face, mainly on the intake, uh, the floor has to have a certain pitch and a roll to it so that it can kick up, let the air out, and also somewhat what's called surface to volume ratio. These tools are what it takes to essentially correct this problem. This is one of the worst chambers, combustion chambers, I would say, that um, as far as lowering the chamber floor, because that's the hard part, not unshrouding the sides. When you have to go in there and lower a whole floor, say 30 or 40 thousandths, how are you going to make sure on one end of the combustion chamber it's the same depth and at the turn, how are you going to make sure it's the turn? I mean, I'm real good with my hand-eye coordination. I ought to be 24 years into this, but these are the tools anyway. I use a a, machine, a regular level, like you'd use it Harbor Freight or Sears, there's the level bar, I separated it. Um, an 11 30 seconds valve that I cut the head off of. These uh, compass, I believe is what they call it. Of course, a vernier caliper. This is my light, and that's more important than what you think, looking for clearances. These little nasty tools are inside diameter uh, calipers, two different measurements, okay? And then right here, of course, is the snap gauges finished off by Machina Straight Edge. I just don't have my markers and my ink right here, but these tools are what I use to go in there on a combustion chamber like this so that at the end of the day when you take that CC barrette and you start checking all the chambers, they're all the same. I strive for a half a CC or below. When I do a complete combustion chamber reshape like on a stage four, I, get, I might allow one CC, a stage five is a half and below. You have to have these tools, and I'm missing some clay. I loaned it to a friend. Don't ever loan anybody your damn tools. Even something is a clay, and I need it. And you know, but I'm almost done with that part of the chamber. The reason I didn't go into it on the video, this is serious knowledge and and math and technique, and it would just take too long. I'm not going to get into posting that type of stuff. When I get ready to produce something major coming up, it's going to have all the tricks. But I just wanted to show you the intensity, the type of tools. This is just combustion chambers. And these are tricks figured out over years that saves a lot of time along with go, no, go gauges. But just wanted to give you a glance of it. Okay, of course, now zoom in. There's our snaps. There's the inside diameter mics. There's my uh, fluorescent light, of course, caliper. There is my straight edge, which that's a good one. And then right there, my compass, my valve, and my uh, level and the blade for that. All right, let's get back to finishing the combustion chambers. We're on our way out of this stuff.
One example, I will show you this real quick because this is pretty simple. I take a straight edge and what we're looking for is something that we can measure off of to give us, if you would, an instant center that we know that if we bring to that point, all of them are going to be equal. What I used is the dowel pin hole and the dowel pin hole on this end. I take and uh, get it right there on the edge and that's going to tell me, kind of like click the dots, that that's my point. Okay, now watch how I do this. I've already done these two up front. So, um... I make sure the dowel's right in. You can take your finger and you feel it. Put some pressure on it. Start at the end and just draw you a line. It goes right off of it. Scribe a couple of times. I've already did it down here. Now, when we pull off of it, look what we got. We got us an indicator line. There's the intake where we're unshrouding. I would be looking probably at this point to pull the curve in. Now that's one that's untouched. See, I'm still off a little coming over here, but I'm pretty close. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take and pull that little lip down with the grinder, roll it right in uh, to the intersect point right here where the chamber is. That's going to guarantee me a great overshroud, a little bit of hook, and they're all going to be consistent going off that line. That's just one little piece of it, okay? Um, got a lot of combustion chamber, guys. One particular knucklehead out there uh, that uh, still believes that by twisting the gas around in circles that it works. I'm not going to call no names, yank. Anyway, here we go with this right here. Just thought I'd show you that chamber, and that's all for right now. Okay, what you're looking at right here is kind of a map that I drawn up, and I'm going to relate it to the head. This is how, in a way, that I go in there and decide how much unshrouding or moving of the combustion chamber, and it's kind of on a little bit of a ratio, if you will, to how much valve lift. This is the combustion chamber of the FE head. This is the area what I call the mask or the quench area. And this is where I'll go in here and do some of my unshrouding. That's your spark plug hole. That's where the top part of the quench comes up. Now, if you'll notice, I got a uh, two different ones. One of them stocked and one of them's modified, okay? And what I've got shows the material being removed and when it lifts off the valve seat, 500 off the seat, and then uh, the, the diameter of the valve stem, which I'm going to show you how I do that, 343 stuck up underneath the valve. So I'll measure it at two points. And what I'm looking for and I try to get this as close as I can. There is no pure mathematical thing for this to where each time the valve lifts, the curtain or shroud area expands and comes outward. Okay, so I'm trying to get the best that I can the minimum area of unshrouding the valve each time it lifts off the seat till it's max lift, which is, you know, whatever I'm running, five or six hundred lift. Now, and doing this right here, if you'll notice, I got this here flush with valve. And you can use any kind of uh, device or any method that you want. And all I've done is I took a valve stem, cut the head off of it, slid it underneath it, and I know that if I do that on every combustion chamber and make the measurement that they're all going to be equal. There's all kinds of ways when you're doing these combustion chambers that when you're lifting the valve up or whatever you're doing to reference so that you know you've got the same amount of material cut out of the area of the chamber. That's what makes consistency so when you get through porting the chamber all of them are going to end up the same. I use everything from a, um, from a compass pointer to a valve stem, to a ruler, uh, snap gauges, whatever it takes, which I've got my little method we'll go into one day here, to try to get the chambers to lay in the same. Now what I've got right here is 350, 350 thousandths when I slide the 343 valve stem, 
that is 343 thousandths off the seat of the valve or thereabout. Then up here is 500 to 600 off the seat. Those are my two measurements right there. Okay. Over here would be what it is stock. This right here, I believe, is uh, this is stock. This is modified. Excuse me. Okay, so that's the stock measurement. After I do the porting and get it figured out, that's going to be the one that I go off of and print. So now that you're seeing how I'm doing it, using a valve stem or whatever method, where I'm doing the unshrouding, how I balance them all, we're going to take a look now at the combustion chamber so you can see the differences. We're going to use uh, the valve stem, snap gauge, and calipers to measure the amount of area that has been removed, but I can tell you this, of all the chambers I've done in the past few years, this one has been one of the, the toughest because I've seen the ability to put a current technology combustion chamber shape into a 1960 head. It was quite a challenge. Um, that was my specialty for years, is taking heads like these FEs or a set of double humps and putting the new technology combustion chambers and port shapes into the head so that customers could keep their original heads on their cars, but yet on the inside, all the trick work was done. It was kind of like, well, I'm factory stock. Uh, you know, they're carrying them to car shows. They're doing uh, matching number cylinder heads, but come on, nobody's going to see inside the ports, the chamber shape, or none of that. So, you know, how can it hurt originality? You want to take the guy's head off and CC it like NHRA to make sure it's 100% point original. No, you're not going to do that, and no, most of these guys ain't going to let you do it. So, uh, you can do that mod, and I've gotten as much as 80, almost 100 horsepower out of putting the new technology shapes into the older heads. While it might not be as good as the quick whiz bam state of the art Brodex head and all that that might get you 140 horsepower or 130, if I get you 80 or 90 horsepower, that's within an eyelash of buying a new set of heads and you can keep the factory items on there. So anyway, back on the combustion chamber shapes, I'm going to show you now. This is what is called actually a mask is what it's called in, in terms, which is a quench area. That's where the lines are. This is the area that I have went in there that I'm going to cut and modify, move material away. As you can see, I've also got marks from the uh, valve to the chamber wall, valve to the chamber wall, valve to area quench where I'm going to remove. I didn't put anything on the exhaust because there's more than enough room right there to unshroud it. And what you're looking for is this curtain. Now while I can't get the curtain against the wall, as the valve expands it's going to do this. Now it's going to block right here, but I can keep expanding the curtain. That's why the big block Chevrolet head with its porcupine head twists the valve, points it toward the center of the chamber, so it can effectively get that a curtain all the way around. That is the sole reason of the Hemi and the big block Chevrolet head. If that don't tell you how damn important unshrouding the valve is on the combustion chamber, that they went and made a whole nother head design and have to bend more metal, make the head bigger just to unshroud that valve, then I don't know what to tell you on that. So anyway, let's take a look at how this relates in the chamber. This is how I draw it up. And let's, let's see what we got in the real world. Notice how I took the valve stem, okay, and I just slide it up underneath just on the very edge. I, I go at two measurements. I take the valve stem and I'll go all the way across the chamber, which I'll show you. There it is almost all the way across, which brings it up to around 550 to 600. Then I bring it down on this edge right here and that lowers it to about 300. You know, you can make different thickness tools, but this two, having it like this in two shots does it. Now I come over here to the part that I'm going to modify or cut the most. Since that's the point I'm going to be hitting really hard, I'm going to come in here, let it snap. Now there's my distance right there. That's what it is. This is stock around the intake area where I'm going to cut and also on the sides right here. So let's take a measurement there and then we'll write it down. Okay, and the measurement just happens to be what I've got wrote on the board. 
which is three at 344, which is the valve stem, is 350 thousandths. Now, I never wrote over here on the side yet. Let's look at the sides. 